Okay, let's get your apron on. Yeah, I don't have an apron. I need one. You're way more organized than mommy. Hey guys, Joy here and the star of the show, Vienna, my daughter. So we are going to show you how to make my turmeric butternut blender soup. We eat a lot of soups in our family because, well, it's something that Vienna will eat and I can put a lot of healthy ingredients. Good job chopping that pear. Uh, and yeah, I just, it's cold. So I really like making a lot of soup and turmeric is a super popular ingredient and it's popular for a very good reason because it's so healing to the body. Now, normally I would use a uh, fresh turmeric root, but I don't have any. So I'm using dried organic turmeric root instead. It's just as good. Like if you look at this beautiful rich color, that's what it should look like and it smells so good. Okay, so um, it, this recipe has like so few ingredients, you pop all the ingredients in the blender and boom, you're done, you can drink it. Well, yeah, drink, sip, eat, whatever you want. Okay, so Vienna, um, we have a choice of onions. You could use red onion, you could use shallots. What onions should we use? Should we do the shallots or the white onion? What do you think? Red onion. White onion? Okay. <laughs> okay, so onions are really, really good for the immune system, which is why this time of year, I love having onions. And plus, onions just add so much flavor to the soup. Now, you don't have to worry so much about the size you cut the onion for this blender soup because you are gonna blend it anyways. So I'm gonna do two onions. Uh, they're like, you know, medium, small size. Uh, but, you know, what you can do is once you make the soup, give it a taste test and if you think it needs anything, you can always just cook some more onion, right? Now my pan is heating and I'm using olive oil. You might be wondering, but Joy, you're a nutritionist. Why are you using olive oil to saute your onions? Well, when you use really good quality olive oil, and I'm gonna start crying now because the onions are getting to my eyes. When you use really good quality olive oil, there's a lot of antioxidants present, um, polyphenols that actually protect the oil um, from oxidizing. So if you're using cheap olive oil that's in like a clear plastic bottle that you find at the grocery store, that stuff's already rancid. Um, so really good quality dark glass bottle, preferably organic, uh, really good quality olive oil means it's going to have a lot of antioxidants and protect the oil so you can bring it to like a medium temperature. And you know, because if it starts smoking then that's when you know you've created free radicals and not a good thing so if you just feel too nervous to use olive oil you could use ghee you could use coconut oil you could use avocado oil you could use um, grapefruit seed grapefruit seed oil why did I why did that sound so weird Grape, grape sorry, grape seed oil you could use as well which has a very like neutral taste so that's also an option Okay, so you want a little bit of sizzling. That's a good sign that it's hot enough. But like I said, you don't want it like smoking. And by the way, while this is sauteing, if you want to see in my oven, I'll show you, I have my butternut squash that I made this morning. So I just, and it's just keeping warm basically. So I did one butternut squash. So it's probably about three cups, three cups of chopped butternut squash. So I'm just gonna add both of these to my blender. So whenever I roast a whole organic chicken or a turkey, I always keep the carcass so I can make a stock. Or it, you can use water. Mommy, yes, honey? I put my onions in my bowl. You put your onions in your bowl? Good job. Good job. So what I was going to say is I always make a stock um, afterwards. And if you are vegan, then just make a veggie stock as well. Because you know what the problem is? A lot of the stocks and broths that you buy at the grocery store, especially if they're in the Tetra Pak or in a can, they have MSG and just way too much salt. So that's why always in my freezer, um, I always like this was actually in my freezer. I'm just warming up the stock now. Okay, so I've taken my butternut squash out of the oven, but like I said, I actually cooked it this morning. So I was just kind of keeping it warm and we're going to add it to the blender. Okay, Vienna, do you want to help me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, I want you to hold the hold the blender really still. Can you hold the blender? Yeah. Hold the blender really still. We're gonna dump all this in. Good job. Okay, we missed a few. That's okay. Let's just dump them in. One for mummy. Mmm. Do you wanna have some? Try it. Let me know what you think. Is that yummy? Okay, so we're gonna add our sauteed onions. 
Clap. Do you want to taste test some more butternut squash? Oh, <laughs> how is it? It's good, eh? This is going to be delicious. See, that's the thing. A good chef taste tests as they go along. So now we're going to add turmeric uh, to our soup and we're also going to add some ginger. Turmeric is sweet and spicy and ginger is obviously a really nice spicy rich flavor. You could use either ground or you could use fresh root. Now since I don't have fresh turmeric root, I'm just going to use both ground organic spices for the turmeric and the ginger, but don't worry, it's not going to change the flavor. Okay, we're going to blend it up now. So I recommend adding a little bit of salt, just a pinch of salt and also add some lemon because the lemon really brightens up the flavor. Um, so I would say about half a lemon, but just give it a little taste test and see if you like it. There you have it guys, my turmeric butternut blender soup. We're gonna have it for lunch, but we're gonna first top it with some kale chips and some chickpeas. The whole recipe you can get on my blog. I'm gonna link it in the description box. If you like this recipe, give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you tried it. Question, comment below, and have a joyous day. Bye guys.